Hey, I'm Stephen Curry, and I'm very proud to be one of the executive producers of the incredible film you are about to watch right here, the Oscar-nominated short documentary, The Queen of Basketball, directed by Ben Proudfoot. I'm honored to welcome all of you on behalf of myself and my fellow executive producers, Shaquille O'Neal, Ben Proudfoot, Breakwater Studios, the New York Times Op Docs, and our gracious host, the Museum of Tolerance and Lieber Geft, to whom we are very grateful for today's event presented in honor of Women's History Month. Get ready to meet an incredible woman who we tragically lost in January, Miss Lucy Harris, one of the greatest basketball players ever and an American hero. Her life story moved me and inspired me and we all hope that through this film, her name and her legacy will be remembered forever. Don't forget to stick around immediately following the film for a live discussion with the filmmakers and special guests, including Miss Harris' daughter, Crystal, and WNBA player, Imani McGee Stafford. And now, the queen of basketball. Long live the queen. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today. And I hope you just enjoyed the screening of the Oscar nominee, the queen of basketball. I'm Lindsay Krauss from the New York Times, where I'm a writer and a producer in our opinion section. Over the past few years, I've done a lot of our work that looks at gender through the lens of sport. And as the producer of OpDocs, our short documentary series, I commissioned this film. And I'm really excited to moderate this panel. So to that end, I'd like to introduce our panelists today. We've got Ben Proudfoot, the director of The Queen of Basketball. We've got Imani McGee Stafford, a star of the, w of the WNBA for the Chicago Sky. Stephanie Owens, who edited The Queen of Basketball. And Crystal Stewart Washington, Lucy Harris's daughter. As many of you likely know, Lucy Harris sadly passed away in January. So this panel has two purposes, celebrating her legacy and also unpacking how her story connects to the themes of Women's History Month, which is this month. So Crystal, I'd love to start with you. In honor of Women's History Month, one thing that really stands out about this film is that it really tells your mother's story in her own words. And I was just wondering if you could speak to why that's so important. And I'm also curious, what did you learn about your mother from this film? First, thank you for asking me to join the panel. It's always a pleasure. Um, I think a lot of times, so just kind of given the timing of her death, you know, a lot of times um, we learn about people like after their death. And so it was powerful for to give her the, her own words um, and not just in her own words, but in her voice. And so giving voice to her, you know, to her past, to her history. And so as, as her, her, her daughter, I found out a lot of things about her. Um, I think one of the most interesting things that I found out was that she was a charter member of her sorority on her campus. And it, that was such a big deal to find out because her institution had just, you know, um, had, had just started allowing, you know, Blacks to, to start attending just five years previous. And so to hear that she was not only a trailblazer in athletics, but also from a social, you know, standpoint as well. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, here's a question for Imani. I'm, I'm just curious. I mean, obviously you are an expert on women's sports, on women's basketball, and I am curious what resonated to you kind of personally and also professionally about Lucy's story. Yeah, so it was an amazing thing. I think when she passed, I was like upset because I didn't know about her. Um, and so like, and I, like similar to what her daughter was saying, you know, like give people their flowers when they're here. Um, and so for me, like I'm a second generation WNBA player. My mom was the second pick in the first WNBA draft. And I remember talking to her, like, why did you play basketball? Because Title IX passed as she was going to like graduate. It was just kind of divine timing. I didn't even know that there was something before that. So like she literally was the building blocks for what my mom was able to do and what I'm able to do. Um, so being able to hear her story in her words and just understand is amazing. Um, and so I think it's very important that these stories are told and that we all know because 
we don't often know and, and couple that with her being a black woman at that like you know like I know who Pat Head is you know like I know all these other stories and I don't know her so I, it was just an amazing moment and I'm happy that you guys took the time to tell this story. Absolutely. Um, here's a question for Ben. What kinds of stories were you looking for when you started this project and what specifically drew you to Lucy's story? Yeah. Well, I, you know, I, I think one of the, as a, as a documentary filmmaker and as a short documentary filmmaker, the, the thing that I love to find are stories where there's a big gap between the historical significance of a person and how many people know their name and kind of getting into why that might be and, you know, what that says about our culture of who we choose to remember, who we choose to celebrate. And so I've been making films like that for a, uh, a while. Uh, obviously, we, we have been doing that together with, with the Times. And uh, honestly, you know, I was in part inspired by your work, Lindsay, in covering these disparities in, in between men's and women's sports. And I think when the story of Lucy Harris came up, it was a friend of mine, Haley Watson, who suggested I look up Lucy and I just saw this incredible list of superlative accomplishments, you know, as she says in the film, me knowing very little about basketball, I just accepted her as, okay, this person is clearly one of the most accomplished basketball players ever because they're all singular achievements. And I couldn't find any documentary. I couldn't find any footage of her playing. Her name was often misspelled. It just seemed like, history hadn't given Lucy the respect she deserved. And so I just felt compelled to do what I could as a filmmaker to help close that gap. Absolutely. Um, Steph, here's a question for you. Um, so I kind of want to get into um, sort of like the, 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 formal, the form of the film. Um, and what I, one thing that I love about this film that I find really striking is that um, it's like we're in the in the room with Lucy and her teammates as they play and as they win. And I think that's just it, it's a really striking way of kind of portraying women and portraying um, women's athleticism in particular. And so I'm just so curious. Can you tell us a little bit about your vision in editing this film um, insofar as its portrayal of women in athleticism is, is concerned? How did you do that? Yeah, um, well, thankfully we had a team that could also help support pulling out some of the um, game footage that was exceptional. Um, I grew up around basketball, but it kind of skipped me. It, it, it like resides <laughs> in the rest of my family. So I um, was really thankful to have people on the team that could help like point out things. But I also was just really drawn to the moments in between um, her actual playing because I felt like it show it really shows her demeanor her personality you know when they win um you see how she uh like gently kind of um pushes the other player to come up with her because she was always sharing the um spotlight so it was like not only was she just like a tremendous player but you could see even when she wasn't playing just like how she carried herself I think that really spoke to her as a person absolutely um here's a question a question for Crystal so you played basketball growing up, I believe, right? And I'm just curious if you could talk a little bit about who your heroes were and kind of in hindsight, what that, what, what the bigger significance of that is to you now. Yeah, so one of the things that I shared on the previous um, webinar was that Shaq was my idol um, just because he played so tough. And, but, you know, we grew up in a time where, you know, we could see him on TV and, I don't, we didn't even have a computer then. So, I mean, obviously we saw him on TV. It wasn't like I was going on YouTube and researching, you know, players. And so, but like in hindsight, like my idol should have been my own mother because I mean, she was just a dumb, man, she was a dominating force. And, but we never knew, we never got to see that, you know, we never, th there was no, you know, internet and commercials and things about female players. Um, now I, I did have, I did, have Cheryl Swoop's poster in my room and um but it was because the WNBA had just started and so um and uh, Cynthia Cooper that was the other one Cheryl Swoops and Cynthia Cooper we had those posters but like I said like we grew up in a time where it just wasn't publicized and my mom was so just shy about it she's like yeah I played basketball you know 
and and but it wasn't like you need to play and be like me you know it was just kind of like yeah I played you know yeah I won three national championships like oh, okay mom all right you know so but in hindsight it should have been her <laughs> yeah I think that's so crazy that um you know you were you were um worshiping the guy that wound up being the EP of the film that's all about your right. mom uh, right. <laughs> really right like great right. fitting um coded to history um Imani I'm curious who were your heroes growing up um uh, w- was it your mom or like, did you have female um, athletic icons or or was it also mostly men? Um, similar to Crystal, I never saw my mom play until I was an adult. Um, oh. Like it was a film like this, the HBO doc about the women of Troy. And that was my first time seeing my, my mom play. My brother, he's older than me. So he like has memories of going to games and stuff. And like, I was there, but I have no memory of like watching my mom play. So for me, like it was all my mom's teammates. It was Lisa Leslie, um, Cynthia Cooper, like Brittany Griner, um, you know, like come, especially like growing up, I watched, I used to go to all the Sparks games. So Lisa Leslie, I was there, the game she dunked. It's like, I was like eight, it was great. Um, and then like when I got older, Brittany Griner, because she was six eight, I'm six seven. Like I remember having her stats. She went to Baylor, I went to Texas, like having her stats on my wall. I played her one year in college. So um, I I was I'm privileged to have always grown up with the women's league. The WNBA started when I was like two or three. So like I've always been able to look up and see women playing sports. Um, and like my appreciation obviously grew as more as I grew in the game, but like that is definitely a privilege. Like just like Crystal said, like she was looking up to men, even though she had a legend in her own house. And I think that's also just something about your parents, right? They never tell you like, <laughs> yeah, this is really who I am. And then you walk in the gym and everyone's like, oh, you're so, you know, your mom was this, your mom was that. So um, definitely that was for me. Like I, now that I'm older and I've seen my mom and I know who she is, I'm like my mom, but growing up, not at all. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that's so interesting. Um, so Ben, here's another question about craft for you um, that kind of gets at, at this. Like, I mean, so I, since I also work in women's sports and women's sports stories, sort of, sort of storytelling, it's really hard to get stories about women athletes programmed and to get them to stand out. I mean, so often people will say, um, you know, particularly uh, programmers or curators, like we want to make a film about a celebrity. And you're like, well, I want to make this film. I want to use this film to cr- create a celebrity. Um, and it sort of becomes this... Um, never ending cycle of, well, we can't get the footage to get programmed. Um, and then the women cannot get famous. And I'm so, and this film to me is really, is really different. I mean, it's remarkable. It's an Oscar nominee at this point. Um, Lucy, it's done a tremendous amount to make people really remember Lucy Harris's legacy and rightfully so. And so I'm just curious kind of what was your vision in doing this? Um, how did you try to make this film um, stand out into um, I don't know, make people really, make people connect with her as, as an athlete, as an inspirational figure, um, as a woman, as a black woman, et cetera. Like what, what was your storytelling approach there? Well, uh, I mean, I guess I didn't really tactically try to do anything. I just thought it was an amazing story. And, you know, it's, it's interesting about like which stories get picked to be told or whatever, right? Like this is a short documentary, you know, our company just, paid to make it right we didn't go around raising if this was a feature documentary we'd probably still be raising money trying to to make it and people would say you know it's just not a good commercial idea show me a comparable movie that's made money we we wouldn't make it so this it's it's interesting because we just hauled off and did it yeah and it just goes to show what happens I, i i just think you know the way that I think the way, as you kind of see in the in the film, when you see them selling shoes and selling cheeseburgers and potato chips, it's like our world kind of functions on storytelling and mythology. And it's like people like filmmakers or journalists, et cetera, are the ones who are creating the mythology around the talented people. And the more you understand about the mythology and the more someone fits into a lineage of mythology, right? The NBA having 75 years of lineage of, oh, this player is like this player who was like that player before them. It's really, I think about revealing the mythology and the storytelling. And it's not that the stories aren't there. (laughs) It just haven't been told. And I think Lucy is such a fantastic storyteller 
and is such an important and powerful and 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 really just like this incredible mythology around here. And, and, and we just wanted to bring that out and, and lift it up and and treat it uh, with the respect and the and the craft that I thought it deserved. I think she's, you know, I think she deserves to be on the Mount Rushmore of of athletes of the 20th century. And that's how we treated it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and I, I, um, you know, just from my own vantage point in, um, in sort of the sports world, the sports media world, have definitely seen a change um, almost since this film has um, risen to the levels that it has. Um, uh, that people are are kind of looking for more, are really interested in the idea of what stories about women athletes are out there that we haven't been telling, as opposed to which stories do we already know are good that we should keep telling. I'm curious, have you noticed that as well? Yeah. I definitely have noticed that. I mean, it's kind of the old thing, like it's it's not a good idea until exactly. somebody does it. And then everybody thinks, oh, that's a great idea. But it's like, I can't claim to have invented anything. I, I think, I honestly think that, you know, you, Lindsay, who have been working for telling these kinds of stories for a long time, I don't think the film would have been made without you, me following your work and then understanding the intersection of all these different things. So, you know, I think it's just, I, I think it just goes to show you if you give the mic and if you yeah. give the platform to people who are right there, you know, waiting with incredible stories, the world can change. And if you can figure out a way for it to make money or, or win awards, suddenly all the people with power look over and say, ooh, what's this? What other stories are like this? And that's right. kind of what makes America go around. So hopefully it sparks a lot more investment in these kinds of stories. Absolutely. Um, actually, and so that's a question, I guess I would I would offer it up to any of you, but I'm particularly interested to hear from Imani about this just because you're kind of um, front and center in this issue. Um, one, one major problem it's discussed all the time with the difference between women, uh, men's sports and women's sports is that women's sports are often considered to be inspirational, whereas men's sports are considered to be investment opportunities. Obviously, we see that um, time and again um, in, in the professional leagues um, to a certain extent in the NCAA, less so in high school when um, when money isn't involved at all. But um, certainly, again, once money becomes um, an issue in these sports, it, it tends to go to the men. Um, and I'm just curious what your thoughts on that and especially what do you think it would take to change that? Ugh, loaded question. <laughs> um, I, so I'm a big believer that people buy the why and the who and not the what. Um, and mm -hmm. so, you know, like people like basketball and there are people that will sit down and watch 90 games before playoffs of men's basketball. But most of those people love Riley Curry. Most of those mm -hmm. people are from Cleveland, Ohio, Akron, Ohio, and they see themselves in LeBron or you know they're an immigrant and they see themselves in Giannis and Joel. Like those are the reasons they're watching. They're not watching, I guess dunks are amazing and being able to see someone do something you could never possibly fathom is awesome. But most of the people are watching because they feel some type of personal connection to these players. Yeah. And when you talk about investment versus inspiration, there is no storytelling in women's sports. Yeah. That is the problem because I like women's basketball isn't for everyone. Like basketball isn't for everyone like but however like people from Inglewood California where I'm from they know me so oh they watch my games I watched her grow up or we went to church together whatever the case may be right um Diana Taurasi from Chino and like so those stories are what gets people to go and because we don't have media interested in telling our stories because it is seen as inspirational versus an investment opportunity we never get the buy-in to prove that it works and it's kind of like I always say it's like buying a pair of scissors that need a pair of scissors to open them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because yeah. everyone's like, well, until you show us the buy-in and that you can make money from this, then we don't care. But it's also like, until you buy in, we can't prove you can do it. Like, so, and it's kind of like this merry-go-round. Um, but I think what is awesome is Title IX, right? Like we saw, and just the use of social media. Like last, last March Madness, we saw the women athletes call out the huge disparity of just the treatment that they were getting in the NCAA tournament versus the men. And this year they was changed, right? Because it yeah. was, that's what social media is giving us the opportunity to do, not only follow and connect with these players, but also put spotlights on things that should have already been remedied. Mm -hmm. 
Totally. I mean, I think that point that you brought up earlier about how basketball isn't for everyone, women's basketball isn't for everyone either, but heroes are for everyone, right? Like, um, and you can find that anywhere. And um, if you if you're willing to look, and you'll often find those it uh, those heroes in the most unexpected places, right? The most surprising places. And I think that's definitely what we have found with Lucy here, um, which is why her story is so extraordinary. Um, Okay, here is a question from the audience and I'm, uh, I'd am i like to encourage the audience to ask um, as many questions as you have. We can um, take them out of the chats function and uh, issue them here to the panelists. So this is a question from Barbara for Crystal. Um, this is about your mom. Um, when was she inducted into the Hall of Fame? And were you and your siblings aware at the time of how memorable this was? Um, and then also she walked down, the, um, down with Oscar, Oscar Robertson. Um, what a thrill, did she even mention that? <laughs> so yeah so someone commented it was 1992 I do think that is correct um so the my older brother had a chance to accompany her I believe I just know I didn't get a chance to go um <laughs> so again <laughs> we we kind of knew let's see how old was I 1992 I was seven so I really I mean, as a seven-year-old, you still don't truly get it. Um, I just knew she went somewhere and we had to stay like with an aunt um, and that she came back and that was that. So no, seven-year-old me did not understand like what, what happened. Now, she had the opportunity to go later. Uh, and I can't remember what year because I've, I think I've gone with her an additional three times. And so that's when I started to under, she was in here before all of these other in the magnitude. Of it. I'm sorry. Are we losing? Can I freeze up? Um, I, no, we got you now. Okay. You froze me before a second. So sorry, what were you saying? So I was saying, you know, I, I, I've gone with her several times since. I went with her, I think, two or three times afterwards. And so I got to see her, uh, you know, I got to see her picture up there and started to make the connection that, so she was inducted before all of these other people. Um, I think we went so to her inducted before all of these other people. That's when I started to realize. Got it. Yeah, no, it's a it's an amazing story. Um, okay. Uh, so Steph, I'm curious in editing this film from well, actually, this is a question for Ben and Steph. Um, Ben, can you talk a little bit about your interviewing style, which I know turns up hours and hours of footage um, and kind of how you go about that. And then Steph, um, what was it like to edit that down into a cohesive narrative? Um, you know, this, this uh, short, short and very um, concise and delightful film that we have before us. Uh, can you guys just talk a little bit about that process and kind of taking all that volume and making it something, something short and beautiful? Yeah, so <clears throat> I interviewed people for a long time. Uh, I start, my first question is, what's your first memory? And people years ago, oh, I think they think back. And I was very lucky with Lucy. She had an incredible memory, like unbelievable, unbelievable. Could tell you like the exact, you know, turns of the game and what the final score was like, was unbelievable. So I think we talked for maybe, Stephanie might know better, 11 hours, something like that. It's 10, Long 10 -ish. Yeah, 10. 10 <laughs> Um, and, and, you know, just going back to Amani's point, this is what has to be done yeah. for all athletes because heroes have origin stories, right? So like, you got to get in there and figure out that, you know, quilt watching the TV and getting inspired or, you know, the, the little, like that, I love that moment of like, it just so happened that her parents had that goal, right? Your grandparents. Crystal had that had the goal and that's where the neighborhood kids would play it just so happened right because like that's what's so wonderful about here the stories of heroes is that there's all these little 
fateful things that converge, right? And yep. Title IX and, you know, federally mandated integration and all these different things came together to kind of like open the crack wide enough for Lucy to be on, on that first team, which led to the next thing. And so she told me the entire story and, you know, obviously it's, it's a direct eye line. And my job is basically to be the best audience ever. And because I know nothing about basketball, I was just bowled over by how crazy this story was. Mm -hmm. Every turn was just like, oh my, really? Like, I couldn't believe it. And like, you know, it's just like, it's amazing. Like, especially, especially the little part of the story where we go from, you know, Lucy is the only black member of the team and one of a yeah. very small handful of, of African-American students at the school going to take down Immaculata who had just won three consecutive championships. They were the gold standard. This tiny school had somehow, some way made it to the whole national championship and they won the game. I mean, I just remember jumping out of my chair thinking, oh my gosh. And then when we saw the footage later of that game and just the electric feel in that, you know, uh, stadium, you know, it was, it was magic. So, so Lucy told the whole story and it was my job to basically sit on the other side with headphones and, you know, be in the best seat in the world, listening to everything from right from her mouth. And then I sent it to Stephanie and she had to <laughs> watch it all and compress it. <laughs> Stephanie, was there anything that didn't make it in that you, that was like, you know, kind of something that broke your heart? I mean, there's a lot. I mean, you know, 10 hours is a lot of time to get to know someone. And um, it, it was a pleasure to listen to, to listen to her speak and to listen to Ben be shocked in, in all of things. And then to hear her response, which was still just like, yeah, you know, had some good days, you know. Um, but uh, she spoke, she, you know, she had, she had a coaching career too that we didn't really get to touch on that much in, in the short. So um, that was unfortunate that we couldn't dive into that part of her life. But um, I do think focusing on the joy of, of the game and all of, and, and how she felt towards that was, was, the, was the way to go for, for this film. But yeah, so as far as the process, yeah, I listened and read the transcripts. And then I kind of just started glumping things in categories and then got to an hour and then sent to Ben and we went back and forth and then Ben wanted music and then we started <laughs> music and uh, building it out that way yeah but there was like a lot of sections it was like Minter City you know college coaching wonderful children you know all in these huge uh, like sequences. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's like, how do you take a story that rich and, and even just one part of a story that rich of a life that right. rich and distill it down? Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Um, I have been instructed to take a question for myself, which is, Lindsay, did you play basketball? Um, did you find your way to this career inspired? How, oh, how did you find your way to this career inspired to put a spotlight on the gender, on the gender disparity? Um, which those of us who play know all too well, indeed. Um, kudos to you and to Mr. Proudfoot. So congratulations, Ben. Um, as for myself, I did not play basketball. Um, I played soccer growing up, which is what they played in my hometown mostly, um, and loved it. And then um, when I was in, I think like ninth grade, started running track as well. And that's when I realized I didn't need a coach anymore <laughs> to kind of keep me in the game. It was kind of all up to me and that that um, whether I succeeded or failed and that really worked well for my for my personality. Um, I just love that it was me versus the clock. Um, and then in terms of how I found this way, my way to this career was kind of by accident because there was no position to apply to. Um, uh, and obviously Opdox itself is a completely um, general, general film job um, about like curation and just to, kind of about looking for great stories generally. But as, um, as Ben and others on this call talked about, it's like great stories are often lying in um, surprising places that not everyone else is looking and because I, I remained an athlete. Um, I just watched my friends and what they were doing um, and kind of realizing that the way, as Amani said, like the way that sports was being covered um, uh, in a lot of mainstream outlets, mine included, um, a lot of the journalists were men and just kind of looking at it from a different perspective than I was as someone who was still participating in it. I saw a real opportunity to kind of raise my hand and at least tell things the way I saw it. Obviously, the way I see it doesn't speak for every female athlete out there, but it was kind of a start. And 
um, after a while you get enough good stories that people realize like, oh, this works. And then they kind of let you do whatever they want, which is why like, Ben and I were kind of able to just like go pursue this story without getting, um, getting like more permission for example um but i think as we were talking again about women's basketball um uh the the, the missing thing here still is investment and needing money um to put into these stories and um that's why i'm so excited that we can show that there's um that these stories there's an audience for these stories because i think that's that's what was always missing here was showing that um i think a lot of times women's sports stories are are served as almost like an eat your vegetables um type approach and um you know men are men are the dessert um or you know what people really want to be watching and um i think a story like lucy shows that no these are these are universal stories that everyone can kind of see themselves in one way or another and we just need to look harder and do a better job of telling them um and uh so to that point actually i think we're about ready to wrap up so i'd love to just open it up to the panelists to well, the audience of course to ask more questions or the panelists to give um, any final words? Ben, perhaps you want to give some final words. <laughs> well, I, I've got a question for Imani. Uh, like, what what gives you the most hope for future generations of WNBA players? Uh, I think everybody that plays in the WNBA as of now, right? We do it for love of this game. We do it for the growth of this game. Um, we do it for the future generations, right? Like Candace Parker, Elena Deladon, Brittany Griner, right? They all um, they all make tons of money off outside of the WNBA. However, we believe in this product and this game and this sport, so we continue to do this. And so, I guess for me, it's watching little boys fan out over women's basketball players. It's watching the younger generation, like say who they want to grow up and play like a women's basketball player. It's them being able to follow the game and see the game um, and being competitive in their own rights, right? It's watching March Madness and seeing women's college teams packing out arenas and having diehard fans. And so I, I think the more we just invest in this game and force people to watch and pay attention and tell stories like Lucy's story, the more we understand that there is there is space here and there should be more. I'll just add that even watching um, Angel City today play in LA and just the stack, that's a soccer team, obviously a women's soccer team and seeing the packed stadiums and a lot of kids there and um, girls and boys and kind of seeing boys be, um, you know, boys cheering on um, these amazing female athletes uh, just like anyone else. Um, it's just, it was just a really inspiring thing to watch. Um, I am seeing oh another question for Crystal, which is, oh, where is it? Um, I see it here. Oh, okay. Then you want to? Read I it? saw her question. Uh, yeah, Barbara. So we're all going, and we're also taking our spouses. So the question was whether or not uh, anyone from Crystal's family is going to the award show. So the answer is the answer is yes. And there's much discussion about what colors we should wear in order to match. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a wonderful uh, one one week from today. So yeah, this time this time in one week. That's crazy. Yeah, pretty pretty fun. Yeah. Um, well, I guess, I guess it's uh, at 6 p.m. So I think we will wrap the panel at this point. And I just wanted to thank everyone for coming and for watching this film. And um, thank you for all your support and for um, supporting this, telling the story of, a, of an amazing woman, especially during this Women's History Month. Uh, thanks so much. And, and thank you also to the Museum of Tolerance as well for having us. Yes. And thank you, Imani, for joining us too. Yeah, thanks, Imani. Thank you for having me and doing this work.